Welcome back to Studio Lou. It is Saturday, late afternoon, like five o'clock-ish. I just got back from a nice um, walk in our local graveyard. It's beautiful outside today. The weather's a little bit warmer. Um, and I thought I would show you where I left off with these books. So I put together um, the two covers for the Puzzle Rainbow Bright book. So these are the two covers. They're constructed um, partly. They're not fully constructed. So this is what the first one looks like. I, um, I'll i tell you what I did. So I backed them. I, I put the backings on the back of the puzzle. This is my super 3M wonder tape that I use to build spines and connect them to my books. It's very strong good tape. Then on this side, um, I inked around the rainbow bright um, label which was on the side of the puzzles box and um, stick that there and then this was a little um, sort of sample of like what the full puzzle looks like and so it's kind of like a little almost like a little stamp so I cut that out and stuck it there and um, connected everything and then I took some nice yellow fabric which I think goes well with Rainbow Bright um, and I did a strip with some nice fabric fix to just really strengthen the outside of the spine but not interrupt this cute spine um, with this little sprite here so I was trying to decide I was thinking about I have this really nice like sky blue paint and I was going to sort of shade in this area where this guy's head has been chopped um so that you would you know not see him there but then um I got an opinion from someone who said no no actually just leave it because you know people know what it is they know it's a piece of a puzzle and that in itself is just cool right so why mess with it and then I sort of thought about it myself like yeah it does kind of mess with the integrity of the fact this is made out of a vintage puzzle and um and and you know it's it's like why do I care about these things? <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I left in um, the 1983 Hallmark Cards ink. So I think it's kind of cool. And I think I actually am going to leave it. So I rounded these corners. I sanded um, the edges. I'm probably going to do a little bit more work to do filler. And then I'll probably paint the very edges just to um, maybe yellow, like just to kind of make it a little more finished. Then the second book, I did the same thing. I actually backed it with um, some nice thick cardstock packaging. You won't see any of this. I can't finish these today because I have to print my digitals um, and my end papers that I've been creating for these books. So I have some really nice papers. So all this is going to be covered and gone. Um, this is all going to be... Um, this will be a fabric and this will be paper. You won't see any of this. And so I did the same thing on the outside here. Um... And then the puzzle that I I used, it had an, sort of an advertisement for another puzzle. This one is like a little rainbow bright on a raft going down a stream with a bunch of the little sprites um, looking at her. So yeah, that um, I just thought would be cute there too. So these two were done. Then I took the cover of the puzzle box and I decided I want to make an altered book with this book, this copy of the um, Tales from the Decameron. So I like the color. Sorry, I have no idea whether it's, oh, it's all these little paper pieces from my table here. I cleaned out my corner chomper and it always makes a big mess. But anyways, so I'm going to make an altered book with this book. Um, so that is something that I will probably film parts of in, in additional videos. And this is going to go on the cover, um, possibly at the top with some kind of yellow ribbon at the bottom or something like that. I'll figure it out. But that's the plan for this. And that's from the box cover of the um, vintage puzzle box. So pretty colorful and cute. Um, I have a bunch of ideas for this. So what to do today? Because I kind of am paused until I plan the altered book and the um, get the digitals printed, which I'll probably try to start doing tonight or possibly tomorrow. I'm not sure. So maybe I think I might try to see what I want to do with this. So this is a vintage 
quote unquote puzzle, but it's a 3D stand up game. So I'm not sure exactly how I want to use these pieces um, in terms of a book cover. So these pieces I thought would be cool pockets inside the journal maybe. Um, I thought about using these for the cover, but like it would be sideways, which isn't that fun. Um, well, unless, do these go together in some way? It would still be a skinny book. I could do like a, nah, it's too weird. Um, unless I did like three panels. No, I think I'll use them for pockets and I'll just like, I'll cut them in half and then I'll trim them um, and use them as pockets inside the book. So that's what I'm thinking for those. That'll be like four pockets. And then I was thinking these, I will cover the back and use them as uh, journal cards in the book. And some of them, where there's doubles, maybe they could be, because um, it's probably a matching game, that would be my guess. So maybe the doubles I could fussy cut and make something else with, different kinds of ephemera. And then there's these little things, which I think are cute. And I could see them being like fabric tacked and glued in. And then you could tuck stuff behind them. They're like little flags. So they're kind of fun. Um, and then there's these little guys that could also be used as like tucks, tucking spaces to stick uh, journal cards and things behind. Um, and these are just instructions, but there's a nice little uh, drawing on the front. I don't think there's much inside. It just shows you how to kind of build the puzzle, the 3D puzzle, which isn't really relevant. And I'll dump that out. And then the sides have sort of like these, whoops, borders that that could be like a spine or something like a belly band. And the back just has the instructions and kind of an image of that. I could use this My Little Pony rainbow and maybe these images. So I think what I'll work on maybe is um, I'm ma I've made some um, digital art and stuff for My Little Pony as well. So I think that that's what the cover will be made from. So maybe I will just start figuring out what to do with all this stuff. So I already said what I wanna do with this, which is to cut these in half. Um, Then we're just going to cut this in half. Good. Um, I'll have to sand these edges a little bit. But they'll make really cute pockets. So I think I'll just cut this. A little thick, but it's not too bad for scissors. Then cut this part off too. There we go. I should see if my uh, circle punch can handle this card board. We'll see. Okay, so that'll be good. And somewhere, there it is, the little circle. I'll do the same thing with this one. torture my corner punch anymore today I like was rounding the edges of the rainbow bright journals and it was not happy about it but it's okay so I don't think I'll torture that tool anymore this. 
So I could, I could cut it in half and use it as a different shaped pocket. Um, or I could cut the tabs off. I could trim. I'm going to start by just cutting these off. Okay. What do I want to do with this? Hmm. I could also just use the whole thing as a single pocket. And that could be nice. I could actually just cut the top off too. I think I might just do that. Just, um... Let's see, you want that to be even, so ruler, I think I need to tidy up my workspace a little bit here, um, there you are, there you are, I have all this stuff, like I got this, I've been, I have all these projects kind of in progress, so I got this little um, wax melting kit that I am waiting for um, my stamps and my wax in the mail so I'm waiting this is sitting on my desk I'm necessarily just kind of waiting to become a project so right let's move I should use if I have a I don't have an empty bag I don't think um, now, but I can combine something with this. <laughs> I always try to keep like all my ephemera for one project together, like in a box or a bag. Right now I've still got everything for the last journal, Shoulder of the Sky, that I didn't use. So I need to file that in my cabinet and um, keep it for something else later. And then um, get rid of all this stuff that's not related to the journals I'm working on. I might just like work on a nature journal while I'm working on these because I have so much ephemera that I've made for nature journals. So this will be the My Little Pony ephemera bag. I hear a baby calamity upstairs. We'll see if that means I need to stop filming and go see what's happening. <laughs> Sometimes certain things just require mom. It's just the way it is. And I wouldn't have it any other way, really. <laughs> so today I was lucky enough to get my sewing machine lesson. Um, if you watched my last video, I was talking about how I bought um, a Burnett sewing machine. Um, and, well, actually it was gifted to me um, for Mother's Day. And so part of Burnett's like customer service guarantee is that you um, like you select a sewing store that is one of their dealers near you and you get a free lesson with your purchase. So I had not um, responded to this lady who had emailed me about this like for months I completely forgot about it the email I actually think it went into my junk mail folder and I I had seen it there and then like something happened in the middle of me going oh I should you know reply to this and then I completely forgot I didn't move the, the email and then something reminded me and I was like oh my gosh like I never responded to that email so I emailed her back apologized obviously and she was you know really really nice but um 
I think it's important for them to make sure that you do take a lesson to know the basics of your machine. And also, I think that as a dealer, they, they like to look over the machine um, once you've received it to make sure that everything like looks normal to them. Like she had her tuck, her tech on site. Um, she sat down, she looked at my machine. She went through all of the um, options on my machine and it was working fine. Um, so I had complained not complained but I was concerned that maybe I had broken my needle threader because I um I, I couldn't get it to thread my needle and I, I was sewing some patches on my son I'm making a little patchy jean jacket for my son and you know how sometimes denim on the like it has those thick seams well I I had hit one by accident because it was only on the back of the fabric I couldn't see it on the front of the fabric because it was like another part of the the denim so my needle broke and I was like oh my gosh and then after that I could not thread my my um needle like with my automatic threader so I thought oh that's you know terrible I just got this machine and I've already broke the needle threader so um I I had mentioned it to her and she said oh don't worry like you know we'll order a part but first I'll have my tech take a look at it so I said okay so then I had tried to watch like some videos to see like how do I change this thing myself and like I did um you know find like somewhere like on YouTube actually a YouTube video about how to change the needle threader and they're actually the parts aren't that expensive or anything it wasn't a big deal but then when I took it into her she said she said first of all you know don't feel bad that like you know if you broke your needle threader it's actually the most sensitive part of the majority of sewing machines and so that being said actually your needle threader is not broken it's just a little bit bent and she said and that's really common because um i guess these these like it's just a it's a very simple thing to happen so basically what probably happened was like when my needle broke it just kind of kicked back and and the needle threader is just like a plastic piece that has a little bit of give to it so by by design actually so like she said it's just slightly bent so watch this and she just literally like took her finger and just kind of gently but firmly pulled it forward a little bit and it's like exactly back in place where it should have been but I was challenged to understand like how exactly it worked because like I looked at YouTube videos but it's such a small part and it's in such an awkward space that I could never find a video that actually showed exactly where um the needle threader was supposed to go and precisely like how it should work like where does it catch the thread so she showed me that today which was nice and then um I like she asked me you know have you gone through and looked at you know all these you know all the basic options of the machine and I had so she said oh good so that means you know we can actually cover fun stuff today then so she's like what kinds of burning questions do you have and I said well you know my prior sewing machines were all you know vintage so like this is a new you know experience for me so she said oh wow that's great you know that you're treat you're treating yourself that's good you'll find this a lot less frustrating to use you know and so um, she showed me how to do a buttonhole with my button foot. I was like, oh, wow, this is so easy. Like, I've been intimidated by um, buttonholes for some reason. So I've become, like, the queen of, like, zipper, <laughs> putting zippers and things. So um, that was really nice to see how easy that is. And she showed me, like, what kind of... Um, thread is best for but like making buttonholes and she showed me that like if you have a, a thread that's a little bit too heavy um and you're trying to make a buttonhole just literally like um you you make your stitch length longer so that it makes the buttonhole like less dense when it's like sewing the little bead in the middle um and so that was like some really good information she showed me overlock stitches um you know it, it was just it was a really good lesson so I feel really good about it and I picked up some cute fabric which actually maybe I'll show you hold on one second I'll grab it so I had um 
had planned to do some shopping there anyhow today because initially when I bought my machine, I bought it online and one of my friends said, oh, you know, you shouldn't have bought it online because it makes it hard for dealers because, you know, you're buying directly from the company, then they don't essentially make their commission on you. And then also they have to support you as a dealer. So then I was like, oh, I feel awful. So I said, you know, to myself, like, okay, well, I'll make up for it by being a frequent you know, and good customer. Like I, you know, especially because yes, I will need someone to, um, you know, communicate on my behalf with the company if I ever have an issue with my machine. So I thought, you know, that's a way to have a respectful kind of relationship. But then I spoke to her today and she said, actually, no, um, that isn't how things are. So during COVID um, shutdown, like when we first locked down in like March, April, they actually were not able to be in the store. So it was kind of beneficial to have online sales of Bernina machines because they do get a cut when someone selects that store as their local store slash dealer. So she said, you know, um, now that we're able to be open again with masks and, you know, limited customers, they allow, they have a large store. So they allow four people at a time in the store. You have to stay six feet apart. Like they're very good about the rules. So she said, like, now, though, that we're open, <clears throat> um, I'm seeing a ton of less, like, like there, there aren't any, she's like, they've dropped off completely with online sales because people are coming in. People would rather see a sewing machine in person and try it and all of that rather than buy it online. Um, you know, for me, I bought it because, well, I didn't buy it, period, but I had wanted this machine for a long time and my husband got it for me because it was a Mother's Day special. So... Yeah, so the good news is is that they've changed things. The dealers actually do still get a cut of the commission and um, you know, they she, she was not upset at all about it. So I felt way better than than I was initially feeling. So, this is my splurge purchase right here. Uh, my husband actually came in the store with me and he was the one who found Nico and Tori um Pen Pen Goosa. Um, this is from Cotton and Steel, a division of RJR Fabrics. So this is like a Japanese fabric for Cotton and Steel. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is a beautiful blue cotton and gold embossing. And it's like, um, kind of like, um, a, a, not a baby's breath, but, um, kind of like a baby's breath, but with these like diamond sort of things. I love this fabric so much. And I thought, you know, this would make a beautiful dress. It would also make a really nice um, dress shirt for my husband, but I am definitely not that advanced yet to do a dress shirt. Like I haven't tried to, I'm sure if I just sat down and I, you know, I was just like, be brave, just do this, follow a pattern. You can do it. I, I could do it. But the other thing is he actually wants to learn to um, sew himself. So I think I might just support that instead and let him sew his own things. Cause I don't know. I, I like sewing for kids and I like sewing dresses for myself and I have kind of a few patterns that I like to use over and over and not get too adventurous. I'm just like that with some things. <laughs> so I'm in that holding pattern, but I also was thinking about like, so this, I love this like selvage. Like I think I mentioned in one of my videos a while ago that I saw this quilt once that was made entirely out of just these strips of like the selvage. And this one makes me think like, I totally get that. So yeah, that's a beautiful fabric. I love it. And then in other metallic fabric news, um, this is another one. So they had a bunch of fat quarters there. This is Rifle Paper Company Wildwood Collection. And this is all gold. But what I got this for... <laughs> is actually funny so they had all these like little um kind of like fat quarters that were sitting in a pile and it said like masks for men like masculine fabric so like my husband laughed at that because like we're just um we don't practice that kind of thing like that masculinity kind of thing like my husband's not uh he doesn't have issue wearing a full roll mask or whatever we don't really believe in all those kind of stereotypes about like men and women can only wear do certain things so you know he's like I actually really like this one and he picked up like the glitziest kind of gold fabric but like he's really into Japanese kind of design and style so um he's like that'd be a really cool mask actually so I'm like okay well I also a mask 
for you out of it. And so that is going to get me um, on my, my kick of like, I, I've been wanting to sew this pattern from the Japanese sewing book. Um, it's just called Japanese sewing book mask pattern online. It's a free pattern and it's the one that's like um, sort of a trifold that flaps kind of into itself and you flip it up and sew it on either end. So I haven't sewn one yet. Um, I had a couple other patterns that I was using. So I'm going to try this new one that I, that I thought was nice. And then I got, um, needles. Uh, I needed a new needle for threading signatures actually. So I got this little packet of repair needles cause I really like the large repair needles. And, um, I got these two. So they actually go with this. So there was this incredible, I mean, unbelievable quilt um, kit at this store. And I was like, oh my gosh. But I didn't buy the whole thing. I, I could not let myself do that. It was like $80 and I have like no idea when I would get to it. But I did buy the panel um, that has like the planets. So this is called Cosmos by Jason Yenter for In the Beginning Fabrics 2020. So what I'm going to do with this is the mini version. So my son, his middle name is Moon. And so we have very space themed things that we like to celebrate for him. So I'm going to make like a little quilt for him, like a little lap quilt with just this panel. Um, and that will probably be a Christmas present for him. Um, yeah, just a little cute little baby lap quilt. And so that's what I think I'm going to do with this. And I really love this panel. I should spread the whole thing out, but I'm not going to because I don't want to make a big mess. So then these fabrics actually go with it in the whole picture of the quilt. So maybe, I don't know if you can Google like the Cosmos quilt, um, Jason Yenter, but like it's, it's amazing. And this fabric, I can't even explain to you. It feels like it's so unbelievably soft and well-made. Um, yeah, it's got like a chic, silky kind of feel to it. Ugh, it's just really high quality, beautiful cotton. So that, and then um, the rest are random fat quarters for making like project bags or whatever I want out of. So this one I thought was really cute. That's enough to make a bodice for my daughter for a dress. Um, so it might be that, I don't know. I do not know. My projects kind of come and go and um, randomly. And same with this one. I just really love these sparrows and flowers. I thought that would just be really pretty as something. And then this one's really cool. It's just matchsticks. So I thought it was really neat. It was part of like a whole, um, I think like Scandinavian fabric set. And like one of the fabrics was really cute. It was like gingerbread cookie brown and it had all these really sweet Scandinavian flowers on it. But I don't know what it was intended for initially, but it had these little groups of like names, like girls' names. And so if it didn't have the names, I totally would have gotten it, but I don't have a use for a fabric with a bunch of names on it, so I didn't get it. But um, yeah, so I actually picked all these fabrics up at the Oakville Sewing Store in Oakville, Ontario, and I had a really great time there. So I definitely recommend them. They're really lovely. Um, the owner, she was very nice and she was just really informative and really helpful. So that's my little fabric haul for today. Um, so yeah, I'll probably wrap it up here just cause I'm tired and I have um, family here and I think I'll probably try to figure out what to make for dinner but I think the next thing that I'll do is obviously print the digitals for those rainbow bright journals and um, maybe I will also work on this my little pony stuff I've got to back all of these cards and figure out what how I want to do um, what I want to do and how I want to do it with them so yeah that is it for me. So sorry I cut myself off in the last video. I have no idea how I did that, but you know, <laughs> it happens. So 
thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe and I will definitely be back with a new video probably tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is Sunday. So all my social media information is in the description box below. Um, FYI, I am running a Cyber Week sale in my Etsy shop right now. So everything is 20% off. So check out my Etsy shop. Um, shipping is free in Canada and the US. So yeah, have a wonderful day and thank you again for watching. Bye.